I'm Audrey Wilde, and I grew up in Wall, Texas, and uh, yes, getting married next weekend. But I started out, I uh, came back here, I worked for Time Clock Plus, which I'm sure a lot of people here probably know that organization. Um, so I came here, was in the corporate world for a little bit, but always volunteered with nonprofits in the area, um, did Meals for Elderly runs every week, um, part of Junior League, and um, Soup Kitchen and everything else. So just servant heart, trying to you know make the world a better place. <laughs> so, um, so I went, and whenever the job opened up at West Texas Boys Ranch, um, for the donor relations director out there, it was an opportunity that I felt that my heart called on and really wanted to, to make a difference. And it's a great organization, a great nonprofit organization. And so excited to tell you all a little bit about it. So our mission is um, that we are, we try to stay to our heritage, which is that ranch and farm um, heritage for that. and. Um, we also are a Christian valued, um, valued nonprofit. So we do have chapel there actually on the grounds. And so that's something that we'll talk about kind of later on too for that. But um, the way that the ranch is set up is they are cottages. So we have five, four are operational right now. And um, We'll get, kind of get into those of, you know, there's some repairs on the other ones that need to be done. But, uh, and then we have cottage parents and those are always kind of hard to find because it is a couple that you need to find for it and they have to, you know, raise children that are not their own <laughs> for that. So it's always, uh, whenever we find those, we're very blessed by them. And so, uh, Boys at the Ranch, this is actually a picture of them working um, there. They're, they're working some of the bulls there. But um, we just hope to offer them guidance, structures, and the opportunities that they probably would not have whenever they're at home. Um, some come with behavioral issues, but some just come because they have broken, broken homes, broken families, everything. And so, uh, just being able to offer them that that loving, caring home, the support, and um, the structure that they need most of the time. Because we all, I mean, how many of y'all have kids? Do they have structure? <laughs> so, so um, one of our biggest things, and you know, a reason if you ask anybody of why, whoever works there, why they work there, is hope. Um, we hope to give that child hope and whenever you're giving a gift to West Texas Boys Ranch, we try to always remind the people that you are giving like a gift of hope for our kids. Um, that being said, um, giving a child a chance. You know, I, and if we did an intake with a child the other day who literally in front of me with his parents in the same room said, I don't know how to be good. I want to be good, I don't know how to be good, and I just want to be given a chance to be good. And that is heartbreaking from a 10 year old, you know? So um, things like that make it you know, worth it. But um, that positive structure in their lives, we had one the other day that we were doing and they're a runaway. They don't want to be home. They don't want to go home. They don't want to stay there. They don't like the rules that their parents are doing, and they don't like the punishment that follows whenever they don't follow the rules. Um, so it's doing positive reinforcement, positive structure, all of those things that as parents we have to do with our kids so you keep them safe. Um, and sometimes there is pushback with it, and it's knowing how to positively input that structure in their lives to where, you know, there's not that much pushback coming back. <laughs> and then um, our, our third one is just hope to give them positive opportunities. Um, so I guess raise of hands whenever your kids or if you still have kids in school, how many of them were involved in school activities? Probably, yeah, more than a handful here. So they don't get that most of the time there at their home. And as we know, extracurricular is everything sometimes for a kid to feel accepted 
kid to stay busy. I mean, they are a lot of energy. So, um, you know, for that, we want positive outcomes. They most of the time are not interested in school. Extracurricular makes them interested in school again because they want to do good, because they want to have good grades, because they want to play football, or they want to do the choir or a debate or something else. But you have to have good grades for that. So it encourages them to be better at school for that. So just giving them positive opportunities and everything like that. And then the last one, probably the most important one, we give hope to break cycles because most of them are there because it's a cycle. And if sure as all of y'all have seen in the world, you have to break those cycles to really make a difference. So that's what we hope to do. So some of those uh, extracurricular activities that I talked about and then some of the ranch activities is our first one is we have ranch rodeo and that is something that we hold in the summer. So as I said that we are a farming and ranching heritage so we still do farming and ranching operational out there. And so the boys are required with some of the program activities to build fence. They painted curbs this summer. Um, they learn horsemanship, they'll doctor uh, sheep and bulls and everything else and they, they'll get in there, they'll get dirty and they'll learn the hard work of it. And uh, ranching is, is not easy if any of you have ever done it <laughs> and neither is uh, picking weeds or sticks or, you know, it's not what every, every boy wants to do on their Saturdays and Sundays and after school, but it does teach them structure and how to work for it. Um, something about our program is whenever the boys do work for something, uh, they, they do get paid for it too. So they, and whenever we do that, they also, whenever they get paid, we teach them financials too. So like you, you got this, let's make a budget for if there's things that you want. And so we try to keep, teach them the financials at a very young age too, of how to, how to manage their money by them earning their own money by work. So that's for that, but the ranch rodeo, um, there's like, I think there's five different things that we do. And they, they really, they get competitive and they really love it. And it does teach them respect for animals too. And uh, they win, so we did it this summer. And this summer was the first year we had enough donors to where each boy got a hat. So they were very, very excited about their hats. And then the winners got belt buckles too. So, you know, after, after they get their belt buckles, they're flaunting them all over the ranch. <laughs> so it's very fun to see and everything. And then we also have our Summer Olympics. That's another summer thing. So whenever your kids are out of school, you try to keep them busy during the summer with some activities. So we did Summer Olympics. That's like with the tennis and basketball. There's a little three on three um, tournament that we do in the summer too. But uh, they do swimming and they do a, like a I think they run like a mile or something and then they do basketball and so it's kind of a, a whole Olympic thing that goes on and so that's another little bragging right that they have in the summer and it does build a lot of like camaraderie between each other too because they need to learn how to work as teams and work with and work and compete with other people in a in a nice manner too so and then FFA livestock projects, uh, this is something that we're doing right now. So the boys actually have, I think it's 14 pigs in the barn. So they are going to be stock showing. And so this is the first year they're gonna be doing FFA because we moved back to San Angelo ISD. And they are so excited to be doing that. And what stock shows will teach you for a lot of kids who do it, I did it whenever I grew up. It teaches you that respect for that animal. It teaches you how to be, a, you know, not a sore loser. It teaches you how to win gracefully. And it teaches you a lot of patience because animals do not do what you want them to do. <laughs> so that is a really fun project of them taking care of another animal that's, or just a animal, just taking care of something that's other than themselves. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, I put weekly chapel in here, but I guess it's bi-weekly, but um, so they, they enjoy that. They, they do uh, their family, their, fa their cottage 
uh, services if they don't have the chapel that week. So um, they'll do that in, in this in their cottage or they'll go into town. Their cottage will bust them by themselves. So, and then uh, summer chrysalis. This is actually um, something you know we love to send our boys to. It happened again this summer. It was our second year that we did it, and those boys they come back and they are walking, walking with God, and they it is just amazing. Uh, everything they learn it completely turns them around sometimes, and so um, we love that opportunity for the boys. So if you all ever have any opportunities that you know some of the boys could attend or anything, we'd love to be reached out to hear about that. And uh, hunting and fishing is just another activity that they have there. Uh, so we do live on like a creek kind of area out there in Dove Creek. So, or I think it's Spring Creek is what it's called, but it's out there. And so they do enjoy fishing a lot of times and they'll go, um, we, they were actually gonna take them to Mason and London here, here coming up, and they'll be doing some deer hunting or whatever. So, uh, we have some. We have a funny story because it it kind of teaches us a lesson of, you know, kids don't always their dreams are not always your dreams. And as parents and advisors and everything, that's something that we need to be reminded of sometimes. So there's a story of a boy who went out in the blind, and there's this huge, huge buck. And the, pers the administrator that was out there with him said, okay, you're gonna do it. You're gonna, you're gonna shoot this buck and you're gonna get it. And he was like, I got it. And then the administrator was like, I don't think so. <laughs> like you did not get that. And he was like, well, let's go over there and see. And he takes him to a hog. He has shot a hog. <laughs> he did not want the deer. And that just is a reminder that, that is sometimes our dreams and the, the director out there, he was like, oh, that was just a beautiful buck. We would have loved to have that one, but we have a hog instead. So yeah, it's just sometimes our dreams are not their dreams and it's important to encourage their dreams still too. So, um, and then most of our boys, so like I said, we moved to San Angelo ISD this year and we've really enjoyed it. Um, it's been offering a lot of new, uh, kind of new activities for our boys that they didn't have previously at some of the smaller schools. And um, so for that, I mean, we have a boy in choir, we have some in band, we have uh, football, cross country, swimming, debate, um, a one act play I think is the other one. So almost every boy is involved in something. I think basketball's coming up. So their schedules are, if you can imagine eight kids underneath one house with two cottage parents, it's a lot of running back and forth. I know whenever, whenever I was a kid and my dad and my mom, they just had me and my brother and my dad told me that he was gonna paint his truck red because it was a tax. I mean, paint, his truck was red, he was gonna paint it yellow because it was a taxi. So. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of moving, moving parts right now with San Angelo ISD, um, but we love that. We love the, you know, the, the counselors <laughs> yeah, as one, and um, we just really have liked our transition there, but then it keeps the boys very busy with their extracurricular activities. So um, we always get the question, like, do we still have animals at the ranch? So yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> and they do work on them and everything. So. And then our cottages, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but our cottages are their individual homes. So they have apartments, if you've, if for those who've never been out there, it's one cottage and you have an apartment on this side for your two cottage parents and then you have an apartment on the other side too. So most of the time those are relief parents on the other side, so they work five or ten on, five off. So they'll do that and you'll have your relief parent come in and they live on the other side of the apartments over there. But down that you have like, you have eight kids. So you have four to each. So yes, so it's a very, a lot of boys underneath one roof. So we have three cottages right now. Um, we can have four. We're looking for 
two more cottage parents and some relief parents for those to open those up so we can accept more boys. And then we have one that's a little out of commission right now and needs some, needs some work. We had, there was a tornado in 2019 that did some damage to a lot of the structures out there. So we're still rebuilding on some of those things. So uh, that's kind of you know what that says. As the cottage parents, they are normally a married couple. I think in the recent talks is they are maybe going to accept some singles if you know if that's someone who is wanting to, especially for relief parents and everything. So, but it is important for us to provide that home feel for the boys, um, and that is brought to you by both parents in the house. So. Um, there is, someone told me about corporal punishment earlier with a paddle or something, was it? Yes. Um, we don't do that anymore, but we, they do have a, it's called, it's just a chart system. There's five of them. They're labeled like tumbleweed and sidekick and wrangler, so very ranchy. But, um, so that's kind of how, how they are gauged on their behaviors and everything. So. You know, you don't want to get, I think it's the Wrangler at the top. I'm not too familiar with it, but I think you don't want to be a Wrangler um, or a tumbleweed. I would not want to be a tumbleweed, but I, I'm, for some reason, I think it's at the bottom, but I'll, I'll verify. But um, yeah, so the positive behavior is just reinforced. So they do get lots of, um, they get lots of benefits for being, being good. So is that. Um, okay, so this one's going to be kind of more of an interactive slide, so y'all aren't quiet on me. But when you buy a goldfish, how big should you buy your tank? Any, any answers? As big as you want the fish to grow. Well, geez, you don't have to ruin it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as, as big as you want the fish to grow. So. A goldfish will actually, it can only grow as big as the tank is because it needs a lot of room to swim. And <laughs> that's, that's fine, Phil, it's whatever. Um, no, so you, they do, they need a lot of, I think it's like 50 or 60, it's a lot of room to swim. They need a couple gallons. Um, and so yes, you need it as big as you want them to grow. So a little story behind this with a boy. Uh, we in took a boy and he had a huge growth spurt after we took him in. And so we have their intake pictures, right? So they're against a fireplace so we can see how tall they are and how, you know, everything. And then we have another one and we're like, man, you have just gotten, you have just shot up. You have gotten so big. And he, I mean, he'll put you to tears, but he said, well, it's like a goldfish. You're only, you can only grow as big as what your tank is. And we're like, hmm, did not, I, I did not know that. So, <laughs> so I didn't know that, but he had said, you know, he, he came from an addict mother who moved him around to her different boyfriend of the month or whatever's couch and just never really had a good stable home environment and was just constantly just neglected. And he had, you know, just not a real good stable home environment. And he said, you know, whenever I was with my, when I was with my mom, uh, I just, I didn't know when my next meal was coming. I didn't know where I was staying. I didn't know if the person we were staying at was gonna like me or anything. And he said, when I'm here, I have all the room to grow that I need. And I have all the love that I need. And I have all the resources that I need. And so that, you know, those little reminders are reasons why we do the things that we do at West Texas Boys Ranch. Because we do want them to grow. And if you're bringing a child in, you're thinking, okay, what can I give this child to where they meet their full potential, where they grow as far as they want to grow. And so that's kind of a little reminder with this uh, goldfish tank. So thanks, thanks Phil, for knowing the answer. <laughs> I'll keep <a> mouth shut. <laughs> no, that's good. It's supposed to be interactive, so that's good. 
Um, this is a success story, and I'm not going to read all of this, but lots of these stories like this. Um, so we have been around since 1947. So lots of these stories are um, on our website too. I think there's like five of them that are featured on there right now. They, they will change as they get sent to us. But some of the success stories since we've been around since 1947, you know, we like to say, you know, we do have adults out there in the population who were here at one point, and they have families now of their own. And so we like to share those success stories um, for that. So if you go to our website, you can read through some of those as well. And uh, this was just one I literally copied and pasted onto here so y'all could, could see that. Um, this is a, it's a really good one too for Kirby. Uh, a recent graduate, another little success story that we have is Brandon. He graduated um, this past summer and he's now at ASU as an ASU cheerleader. And so he was a cheerleader at T TLCA whenever we were there. And then now he's at ASU, so he's pursuing you know, his undergrad. And so um, we're just very excited for him. And you know, there's lots of those stories that we have so they know that they can come to the ranch anytime that they, they need. They can give any of us a call anytime that they need to. And so um, you know, things like these are, are really you know, what's worth it for us. Um, as I mentioned, these are the three cottages that we have open right now. Some of these, most of these boys are, are still there, but um, three cottages that we have right now, as you were talking earlier with the, the DOS Foundation, that's the DOS Cottage right there. Uh, we have DOS and Maybe and Stevens. Those are, I think those are the ones that are all open right now. Um, but these are some of the boys. Uh, they can fit eight to a cottage. so. We can fit a few more in some of these, that top cottage and everything. And so they've kind of moved around a little bit on that. But, um, so these are some of the boys there and this was their first day of school back um, coming here. So excited for their school year. Uh, this is uh, Zayman and he is currently at the ranch and he's 15 years old. And we actually just featured him in one of our appeals. So we send out appeals uh, four, four times a year, and then we send, send out our ranch hands too that kind of give a little bit more of an overview. But our appeals are basically asking, uh, they're, they're giving you a story and they're asking you know, for donations for that. So we do a work bell one that lets, it, it gives us money to be able to pay the boys for the summer for the work that they do. So there's that. And then we do, uh, we do a Christmas appeal that's gonna be coming up soon. And that helps us do Christmas presents for the boys and everything. So that's, those are our appeals. But Zayman was just, uh, he was just featured in our back to school appeal, which helps us buy school supplies and everything for the boys. But he was featured because he loves cross country. And whenever we were at TLCA, he was getting pretty good to be up at the top and number one there. And he was pretty excited. He was gonna be top dog over there. Well, when they found out that we were going to San Angel ISD, he was very nervous. <laughs> he is, I don't know if I'm gonna beat all these guys. I'm probably gonna be at the back now. And just really, he has more of that kind of Eeyore effect where just gets really down on himself really fast. And then two days later, he came back, you know what? I may not be the fastest, but I'm gonna try my hardest. So that was good. So uh, he, this was actually a quote for him. He said, before I came to the ranch, I struggled in school, and never paid attention. That changed when I left home to come to the ranch. I struggled a little less than what I used to, but when I figured out I was good at running long distances, not only because I had great endurance, but also had great willpower to never give up no matter what obstacle. At 15 years old, that's pretty remarkable to say um, whenever you've had some of your past that you've had. So he um, really enjoys it. And this is a recent photo with him at Central. He won the JV meet. He's actually won two of them now. So we're very proud of him and he has been determined. He ran all summer. <laughs> <laughs> and you just see him running down the lane. And so he, uh, he's very excited. And our cottage parent, um, they actually just had a, a baby, but he ran with him. So 
they were, or, and then the, if he wasn't able to, his wife uh, drove the car behind him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they were a good support system for him. But, so we're very excited for, for Zayman, and he was one of, if you do get our appeals, he was one that was featured and was talking about cross country, so just a little update, he's winning some cross country meets. And then uh, this one, this one is uh, talking about chapel service. And um, so, like I said, we are farm and ranch operated. And so during that, if you have ever talked to a farmer or a rancher, the years are not always good. And there are trials and tribulations and there are triumphs too. So, and it's important. I think that's with every industry probably, but um, how we relate to that is um, when you plant a seed, it may take a little bit. I mean, that seed could stay in the ground for years until it rains, and when it rains, it'll sprout. Um, so, for that being said, it doesn't always prevail, but it will eventually. And so, we had a kid, um, and this was before I was there, so I am stealing the story. Um, we had a kid who was there, he was there for his year, did good, listened, went to chapel and told uh, one of the administrators, I'll go because I'm going to respect to go and I'll listen because I respect to listen at chapel, but I don't believe. So you're not going to make me believe. That's what he told his administrator. And the boy, I mean, he left and we didn't hear from him for 10 plus years. We just heard from him uh, actually, I think about six months ago or something. And he had gotten back involved with drugs and everything else had, I think he had a kid or two, uh, I think so. But he had gotten, you know, just involved with drugs and everything. And I think he got in a, a really bad um, accident where they had to use the paddles to bring him back to life. And he said that when he was brought back, he, he had God spoke to, speak to him, and he said that it was all of the messages that he heard at the ranch, like during chapel. And he said it was just all of those. I, I was listening, I didn't, I didn't believe, and, but I, I did listen to them, and all of those were the only things that were coming back and just flashing back to me. And he, so he has cleaned up his life and called us and let us know, you know, this. And um, he is a believer now. And so that right there, you know, it didn't, when he left, we were not sure if that seed was, we, we knew it was planted. We didn't know if it was ever going to blossom. And so we're seeing that it does. So that's one of those things. We hope to, you know, just break that, break that curve. So that's a fun, um, fun story with the, the seeds planted and everything. And then this is, uh, this is our executive staff out there. So if you see any of these spaces around and have some questions about uh, West Texas Boys Ranch, any of us can answer those or um, help you with anything that you could ever need um, to know that. And then um, always a question that we get asked. So there's several ways that you can help, but these are kind of the most, uh, I guess, most common ones. And so at chapel service, we're always looking for volunteers um, and churches to host our Sunday chapel service on the ranch. And then tutors. Uh, volunteer tutors, it's always, you know, anyone to help out in the classroom. So we do have a learning sitter there on the ranch where they can get tutoring there. We have a, a, a full-time tutor as well. So uh, that's something we're always looking for there, especially during the school year and stuff. And if any of the kids have to do summer school, that's something we're looking for. Uh, monetary donations, of course, if, you know, if you feel it in your heart to give, uh, we do have a donate button on our website and everything to where you can give there and give every month and you can kind of set it up easy. You can call our, um, our office. Uh, her name's Amber. She would, she would help you with that. And then word of mouth support. So we actually have a program that was, I think it was tried, that was initially going to be thought about 
in 2019 and then COVID happened, which you know kind of threw a kink in everybody's lives. Um, but that wagon boss is where you would just be a word of mouth person and you can do events or whatever and it doesn't matter how much you bring in or it doesn't even matter if you bring money in sometimes just getting to know that hey west texas boys ranch is out there and this is how you can help and you can contact us if that's something that you're interested in is becoming a wagon boss um, for that and then cowboy christmas so this is actually one of our needs that is coming up soon so Christmas. Um, but this one is to help this year's Christmas, um, a great one for most of the time. It's maybe the first Christmas that some of these boys have too. So um, a little further on that, currently we have 20 boys at the ranch. By Christmas time we'll probably have around 25, 24, 25 of them. And um, so we are looking for individuals, couples, families, um, just anyone if you want to sponsor a kid. I think we have five right now that are sponsored, so we're still needing a little bit more of those. So that's more of an immediate need um, for us right now. So if you know of anybody or you yourself want to sponsor a child for Christmas, I can get you in touch with the person that is, is leading that up. So, and then, yes? What, what is involved in sponsoring? Yeah, so um, you can either do monetary donations um, to buy the Christmas gifts too, and you can do any amount that you want. And then we're also looking for shoppers all the time too. So we can actually give you the list and you can go buy the list yourself, or you can just be a shopper with some of the other donated money we have. So you can do both monetary and time for that. Um, and then we have to you know, wrap the gifts because you can't just, Give them the, that's the whole fun is unwrapping it. So, so those are, those are some of the things with our Cowboy Christmas and that's going to be on December 15th. I think December 15th is whenever we're going to have that Christmas party for the boys before they go home. So, and they do, I guess I should mention that they do have home visits with their family if they choose to. Um, sometimes the home visits are good. Sometimes they're bad, um, but they do have home visits and sometimes they can choose not to do them too. So it's just kind of up to the boy, up to the family. Uh, I will mention that West Texas Boys Ranch does not take custody over the child in that. So that they do have to have a guardian. The ranch and the boy all have to be in agreement at all times for that boy to be on the ranch. So yeah. Any other questions? Or I'll just open it up to questions. So if they don't go home, do they stay? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And during COVID, they did not. So they were going to go for a spring break, and we didn't know when they were going to get to go home. Whenever we had to keep them there, so that was, you know, sometimes whenever they're looking forward to going home and seeing their family too, we we like them to go home because sometimes the behavioral issues can kind of come up with that if you, you know if they're not able to do something, but. Um, lots of our boys, they make great decisions about going home and, and whenever not to. So, yeah, good. So, when you were, when the kids were at Mertz in, in school, mm -hmm. life was a lot easier for house parents, our cottage parents. Now that they're, and they've been in San Angelo and TLCA for the last several years, now they're this the ISD, and mm -hmm. the opportunities have grown, which yes. they're involved a lot more. Is there a, like a, uh, volunteer shuttle service or something to help these parents out or anything or is are you anticipating developing something like that? That could be something that we talk about. Um, a lot of the things with that is there's a lot of certifications that our volunteers have to have. So it's with the aid certifications that you have to have or, you know, clear drivers driver's record and um, clear background checks. So our background checks even for our tutors is pretty pretty strenuous on everything and everybody who works there, obviously for the safety of the boys. But um, that could be something that I can ask and see if if that could be yeah, something. It seems like it's gonna be a, a pressing need the more the kids get involved in this stuff. Yes, the more kids and the more kids too. <laughs> so yes. Do the boys age out. The age? Do they age out and leave? Yes. So that we are licensed to take anywhere from nine to seventeen. 
So we don't get a whole lot of nine-year-olds that we don't, we don't get a lot of whole lot of calls for that. Most of ours start at age 11. So we typically have 11 to 17 on the ranch. And um, once they're 17, 18, whenever they graduate high school, they will. Um, we also have a foundation, the West Texas Boys Ranch Foundation, that will do scholarships for anybody who has been on or at attended the ranch ever, who had a, um, I guess, a successful discharge, and they can apply and go to school for free anywhere. So. Are they allowed to have older than the allowed to have a card? They, no, not at the ranch, but we did have one that just got his driver's license, but they don't have their own vehicles at the ranch now. So uh, one of the things that happened during the tornado was lost several buildings, mm -hmm. torn down, built a new gym, is that completed? It's not completed yet. What's the up there. We, uh, it's just kind of with all building, you know, so I think the roof is back ordered or something. Some of the metal for it is the last I heard in the director's meeting. So, uh, or the board meeting that we just had, I think it's the roof that's the, the hang up on it. But the builder is kind of, you know, at the factory's mercy on that too. They they can't get the metal in for it. They built a couple of really amazing buildings out there. Yes. Huge. They've got designed to be like an auto body shop you know, and things like that as well. So they've really done a lot of great stuff. Yes. Yes, um, that is, uh, so the, the ones that you're talking about, there is, there's like a, a home Mac one, there's an implement cover, there's a new pig barn out there, and then there's the, the shop and everything. And those are by Leah and Ella Williams. And they have donated um, all of those buildings with just in the last couple, couple of years. And they don't have children, so everything that they have will be left to West Texas Boys Ranch, and so we are their legacy. So we actually just did a road. We just got the road. Um, there's where all of their buildings are. It's called Williams Way, and so they actually will have be on the map there at West Texas Boys Ranch. So if you're ever going to Williams Way, you are on the ranch. <laughs> so yes. Any other questions? I will say that having uh, the boys come, I've been at Lone Star slash Lee, this is my 19th or 20th year, I can't remember. And when I first started, Boys Ranch boys were there, and then they went out to uh, Erie County mm -hmm. before they came back into TLCA. Having them back really is, uh, it's been fun to watch them interact with each other. They really do have a family relationship with each other. Uh, two of them got in trouble the other day because they were- I'm aware. You know, <laughs> a, a spat between the two of them. And so they both wound up at lunch detention. And you know, I mean, but it was like- Brothers were, fighting. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, and they, they stand up, some of them get in trouble for standing up, protecting for the other boy from the ranch from somebody else. And yes. uh, so it's been really uh, fun to have them and get to watch them with each other and interacting with other students. Of course, thank you for that, thank you. Thank you, let's yeah. show our appreciation.